Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. My name's Jared. Today I'm going to be continuing the series on the V35 and I'm going to be installing the gauges which you saw in the last video. We just got them mocked up in that holder. So today is going to be wiring them in and getting them to actually work. So as you saw in the last video, if you haven't seen that, go back and look at it. But I've picked up this water temp gauge a uh, wideband oxygen sensor gauge from AEM and this one is a dual function it is analog oil pressure and also temperature down the bottom some things that you're going to need to install them are one of these water gauge sender adapters so this splices into the coolant hose and allows you to install this sensor into it so it's actually got a hole and a provision to add that in. Following on from that, for the oil pressure and temperature, you're going to need, need one of these oil filter sandwich plates. So it has three 1 8 MPT ports on it, same as the coolant neck adapter. And what this does is it goes between the engine block and your filter. And it uses this adapter here to hold it on which goes in the middle then your oil filter attaches to the end of the threads here then from there these sensors which we have here can go into those fitting locations there so we can get our readings off of that i also at the same time ordered a oil seal here because my oil filter housing is leaking so i'm going to replace this at the same time when i've got it off and I also got a switch so I can control the lights on the gauge for the backlighting. Because even if I attach it to the dimming function on the headlights, I'm not sure whether it will be too bright at night. I want to be able to maybe turn them off completely. First, we're going to start by removing the plastic splash guard under the engine. This is going to give us easier access to work at the oil filter location and run the sensors. As you can see on my car, the sump's quite oily and around this oil filter cooler is also quite oily. So I'm thinking that the seal between here and the engine is gone. So I'm going to start just by removing this filter and then getting this cooler off to change the seal inside and then we'll look at bolting the sandwich plate on after that. Next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and remove that nut there so I can change the seal on the other side. I'm actually going to use these two for the sensors and this one is going to not be used so I'm just going to seal this one up in that port so that it doesn't leak next we have our oil pressure gauge gonna go in it's going to be easy to install this now before we actually put it on the car. This is a tapered thread on a parallel port so we'll need to add some sealant as well. You can't do this super tight because it is aluminium with a steel fitting. You will strip the threads if you're too tight. Then next we have the temperature sensor. Okay, 
Okay, now that's ready to go into the car with our adapter fitting. So that'll go in like this and do up with the original oil filter location. So don't forget to have your seal. And that is facing the side of the engine. And we're just gonna put a little bit of oil. And I'm gonna have the sensors facing up because I'm worried if they point down, they the plug or the wire will be too low. And then we get our fitting. There we go, now that holds in place. We got 25 mil socket. And then I'm gonna replace my filter now because I'm almost due for a service in the next month or two. So I'm just gonna do it already. So that's what it looks like installed. The original oil cooler, the sandwich plate and new filter. And then I've just got the fittings, the sensors pointing on the side there, which I can get access to with my hands and they're not gonna get damaged from underneath the car. Next up, I'm gonna work on mounting the coolant temperature sensor in this top radiator hose. And the reason I'm doing the top radiator hose is just it's easier to get to. And when we remove this, it's gonna be the easiest to bleed. And also, as you can see, my car's up on jack stands. This point is extra high as well. It's almost pretty much the same height as that radiator cap, which is the bleeding point. So at the same time, I actually had previously ordered some radiator hoses for this car. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove this top radiator hose and replace it with this one. And at the same time, mount the coolant uh, adapter. So as I had shown before, this is the coolant adapter and it's gonna go in this hose. This one is gonna be a little bit more difficult than normal just because there's not much of a straight section here and usually in the middle is better. So you'll need to cut out a piece of hose this wide and I'm thinking maybe in the middle here or over here might be better. So that's kind of what it's gonna look like in there. Doing it on a bend is not ideal because it's gonna be hard to seal. I'm thinking maybe like that would be the best option. gonna have the sensor pointing down but I'm gonna have these clamps with the screw attachment pointing up so I can easily tighten it in the engine bay if needed this little bolt is for a ground and we're not using it in this application so you can either just remove it or you can tighten it up then next we've got our temperature sensor the same one we saw on the oil sandwich plate And again, not too tight because this is an aluminium adapter. And there we go. When that goes in the car, it'll look like that. We have the sensor down the bottom. And we won't have to look at this SAS logo. It'll just look clean with the, the black fitting in the middle. Finally, we have our wideband oxygen sensor. So this is a Bosch LSU 4.9 sensor that has come in this AEM kit. To install this, you would either have to go to a standalone and remove one of the factory oxygen sensors, or the kit comes with a bung here, which you need to drill a hole and weld into the exhaust. 
previously when I was at the exhaust shop and he was doing some work for me, I got him to install one already. So I have one on one of the banks of my downpipes. Things to note when installing this gauge, the sensor needs to be mounted on an angle if it's not in a vertical pipe because the condensation will build up in the bottom and make the sensor wet. This will not last as long. The sensor also needs to be 18 inches or 45 centimeters downstream from the collector. So for us, this is best suited for the downpipe or where the factory cats are located. So I'm gonna install mine just here where the exhaust shop has previously installed the bung. It's probably better that it was down here because I think it's a little bit closer than 18 inches. But here at least it's gonna be quite well protected. Down here it's lower on the car and it might get damaged. As I can see, there's a little bit of a wear mark here already. Some aftermarket cats like this one I've got also have a port which you can install an oxygen sensor on. But it's important to note that it needs to be on the upstream side of the cat. So in this case, it's actually after. So we'd have to flip this around so it takes the reading before it goes through. Okay, this next part is the more tricky one. And this is gonna be starting on the wiring. So this first one here is actually the wiring harness for the water temperature sensor. It's just worth noting that to connect the temperature sensor to the gauge, this doesn't come with a harness. So you will actually have to make your own to link from the gauge to the harness. And on here, you'll have a ground and a signal. So you only have to run the signal wire to the ECU and the ground can be anywhere on the engine. And then with the harness here, we're going to connect the sensor input, the ground, the illumination, which I'm gonna add a switch for, and the ignition. Coming over to the next gauge is the same, but this one actually comes with two harnesses, one for the pressure sensor and one for the water temperature sensor. And these run to the gauge and plug in. So there's actually no wiring involved on that one. The next one is a patch harness. So if you have multiple gauges, you can link them together so you only have to supply power to one. I only have one of this track series gauge and the other one is not. So this one's a cheaper version of this one here. So for this one, we're gonna to have to plug our two sensors in at the top. We're not using this pass through one and just like the first one, we have to provide a ground, an illumination source if you want, ignition and battery. Just to save the settings is why you need the battery. And then onto the wideband, this one's simple as well. That plugs into the wideband sensor we already installed. This plugs in the back of the gauge. And then this also plugs into the back of the gauge. And all those different wires correspond to here. We only need to connect the switched power source and the ground. These are the ones for can and serial outputs we're not using in this case but you can use these to wire into the ECU if that's what you're after. I'll just add this snippet of the page here just in case you'd need that for your own installation. So what I've decided to do with running the wires is because they're so short, there was nowhere to get them through the firewall. What I've gone and done is I actually added a hole just next to the shift boot because this was the shortest distance to get them to run. And as you can see here, I've got the two wires from the temperature and pressure on the oil gauge and they're only just going to be long enough to reach my gauges there, which is fine. Then I've also ran this twin core wire for my coolant temperature sensor, which is here. It's just, I've got extra here, I'm going to cut it to length. And then we've also got the wide band sensor, uh, the pigtail from here to go into the gauge. So now the next step is going to be wiring in the power for all of them. So I have an update on the wiring. What I've made is this little harness here. So essentially all this is the wideband, the oil gauge and the water temperature gauge. All the power and illumination sources for that. On the other end here, what I've done was 
I've wired in all of the ignition source, three of the wires together. I also wired the three grounds together and then the two illumination sources. And then I've also got the water temperature input here and also a constant power, which is used for the gauge color. So that end will connect into the gauges and this end will power and ground the gauges. And then in the car you saw before we put the wires through. So what I've done was I've joined them all together and I've got the ground here for the water temperature gauge. That's going to go on a ground here which I'm using already for the radio. So I've just got that a little bit shorter for that. And then I've got the positive for the water temperature gauge. And then we've got oil pressure, oil coolant and wideband. All of these three are going to plug into the gauges directly. So what I've done for the illumination is I've got this, this on and off switch which is push in and out and I've taken one of the empty blank switches out which are under the dash and I'm going to mount this in it. So what I've done is I've just soldered on and heat shrinked the power or ignition source for the illumination so I'm going to be able to turn it on and off manually and then it's just got a little locking nut that does up on the inside. And then it just looks like that inside to turn the light on and off. So what I've done with the wiring is I've got my two illumination wires which I showed you before. The ground wire which I've attached here. And then I've got a battery and an ignition source here. So for the battery and the ignition source, if you go to your radio plug, the red wire is actually the ignition source. And if you flip it over, there's a yellow wire which is actually battery power. So the radio is using the ignition switch source to turn on the radio, but it's powered by that constant battery power. So if you intercept those two wires, you can use them for this gauge. So then I've just got everything connected up here. The only thing I need to attach is that water sensor, which we ran before, which is over here. And then we've got our power harness here, ready to go into the gauges. Just for reference, this is with the car running now. As you can see, the gauges are off. When I first started, the oil pressure was around 90 PSI, which is pretty good, I'm happy with that. And now it's starting to warm up. You can see we're at 50 degrees on the oil and about 50 degrees on the water as well, which is what I would expect because of that oil to water cooler. And also the idle is pretty much spot on. 14.7 AFR, which is stoic for just sitting here, which is perfect, I think. Pretty happy with that. One thing that I did have to change was this gauge on the illumination function only dims. So I ended up adding the orange illumination wire from that to the orange one on the radio. So now when I turn on the headlights, it dims that gauge. And for this one, because it's more basic, I left the switch in. So now I just turn it on and off with the switch. In hindsight, I probably would have bought two gauges the same or I probably would have bought another one of these, but they don't offer it in the dual function. But overall, I'm pretty happy with how they look. And again, if you open this up, that's what it looks like on the inside. There's still room to put something in there if you want it, but the wires are, are in there like that. All right, guys, that wraps up another video. Pretty happy with how the gauges went for the installation. The only thing I would change if I did it differently is I would buy two of the same gauges so that the illumination function is the same on the both. But I'm still happy with how they look and how they function and how everything ran, the wires and it plugged in. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If not, if you have any questions, put them down below. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.